Hello and welcome. Uh, we are thriving together here in Beverly, Massachusetts, under the auspices of uh, the Council on Aging. And today we are, t my name is Susan Crowley. Uh, my guest today is Nadia Prescott. And we are going to be, there's Nadia. Hello, Nadia. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be talking about medical assistance in dying today. And that's uh, abbreviated with the acronym M-A-I-D, and so we'll probably yeah. be using that, we'll probably be calling it MAID for short today. You know, and I want to say that, um, you know, this topic uh, is, uh, can be a challenging one, or any, talking about dying can be a challenging one, although sure. people I know, and this program is geared to uh, people who are older, um, we're, we're, we're adjusting to the fact. We know, you know, that it's coming, even though it can be challenging, but the aspects of how one goes through those end years and the dying process kind of come to the fore. And so what um, we're hoping to do today is um, to talk about, first of all, the Massachusetts law, which has um, been in the works for how many years, Nadia? 16 years. 16 years. So it, it, it's not necessarily languishing. It seems to be picking up more and more yeah. even, support. Even though it did not pass this past session, it did get further than it ever has before. It got through the uh, public health committee and went on to the Senate committee. It had more co-sponsors than it's ever had before. And uh, it was supported by a poll of people in Massachusetts, 75, 73 percent, I think uh -huh. is the exact number, uh -huh. of people support this uh -huh. bill. So there's a lot of momentum behind it at the moment. Okay. And Nadia, you're here under uh, compa the, you're representing Compassion and Choices. Am I, I correct am. in that? Yes. The national organization that um, has branches in each state. And, uh, you know, in looking at their website, let me just say a little bit about them. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed their, or I like their, um, uh, their vision statement really well, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, a society that affirms life and accepts the inevitability of death embraces options for compassionate dying and empowers everyone to choose end-of-life care that reflects their values, priorities, and beliefs. And so in that, then Compassion and Choices provides information, it provides um, education, uh, Advocacy. Ad advocacy for, you know, this bill. Yeah, uh, which across is, all, the all the states yeah, it's what's been involved in. The name of that bill is specifically, I think I wrote it down here. Oh, did you? <laughs> um, uh, End of Life Options Act is yeah. the official name of the bill. So they advocate for that, but they're advocating for people being more aware of their options at end of life and to... to um, support people thinking about that. Yeah, the discussions um, around the bill and raising awareness of the fact that we do have choices. Mm -hmm. I mean, hospice has only been around since 1974, I think, which is not that long. So more and more there are uh, uh -huh. discussions, there are movies out uh -huh. there now, documentaries, on both Netflix and Amazon about the importance of this mm -hmm. um, topic, why people make the choices that they do, but uh -huh. it's really about the fact there are options now uh -huh. and uh -huh. what you may want may be different to my values, my mm -hmm. beliefs and my priorities and that everybody should have that choice mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm make their own decision. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, and that reminds me, um, there was a, I think it was a Bill Moyers special way back, maybe even in the 70s or 80s, and it was called The Right to Choose or The Right to Die or something like that. And it was one of those beginning things where... I think I remember you that. You know, there's, you know, 
the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was a time of empowerment, you know, of people, you know, kind of recognizing that they have individual rights and they have the ability to make some decisions on their mm -hmm on their own behalf and not, I'm, uh, I should say that I'm, uh, you know, my background is nursing and so I, my whole career is spent, you know, in the healthcare system, you know, and I've kind of seen that myself over time, you know, it, uh, it was always, um, you know, medical personnel felt like it was a failure if somebody died and there was just really not this recognition that you know, it's a bookend, birth and death, you know, and... Uh... And that, that's actually one of the initiatives that um, Compassion and Choices is taking on at the moment is uh, the emergency room. There is far too much medical care going on uh -huh. in the emergency room and not enough care taken uh, to look at what patients actually want. So uh -huh. for even for those who are educated uh, patients and have specific wishes, it's important that the medical staff uh, support those, uh -huh. uh, know about those wishes and support uh -huh. them because there are, there is uh, much more support now for the, the uh -huh. bill uh, uh -huh. amongst the medical professions mm -hmm. so that's good mm -hmm. uh, as well mm -hmm. that it's you know, making sure it all you know trickles down if uh -huh. you will to uh, yeah. doctors yeah. on the floor in the yeah. ER. Okay. Well we'll get into um, you know the specifics of what the bill is and what it isn't but first of all I know it seems if I'm correct you got involved with Compassion and Choices because of a story of your own father's death, am I am I correct about that? Yes. Um, let's let's yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. My father was diagnosed with mesothelioma in the UK, and oh. uh, I was the only one who actually understood what that was and what it meant because of living here and uh -huh. all the TV ads uh -huh. um, related so, to asbestos. And yes. Yes. So I spent two, three months going back and forth, uh, sometimes just for the weekend or uh -huh. Father's Day. Uh -huh. And I watched his rapid deterioration. I also watched um, so many things in the family. We had never talked about what's going to happen when my parents age, what kind of care do they want. Do we have DNRs? Uh -huh. We had none of that. Yeah. And DNR, I, I'll just say, is do not resuscitate thanks. for those that may not. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have that in place. And trying to get that in order about 10 days before he died and explaining to my mother what that meant mm -hmm. uh, was hard. Um, he, ha uh, he had breakthrough. Pain. About 83% of cancer patients have breakthrough pain. And we were managing that at home. Mm -hmm. We did hospice at home. Mm -hmm. And the hospice were wonderful mm -hmm. when they were there. Mm -hmm. But at 2 in the morning when he's screaming in pain uh -huh. uh, or delirious, they weren't there. Yeah. We were. Yeah. Uh, and at the end, uh, he did not um, pass peacefully. Mm. And that is something that has stayed with me forever. I was always a member of an organization called Dignitas in Switzerland, which is also an organization uh, that assists people from around the world uh, to, uh, to have the made uh -huh. um, process. Mm -hmm. And Many years ago, my a friend of mine uh, used them, and I thought, well, this is very sensible, mm -hmm. very sensible. It is what I would want. So I was a member. And when my father died, that I immediately um, processed that lapsed one year of membership. Uh -huh. And then I fast forward uh, to 2017, and I was diagnosed with lung cancer. 
you know, a non um, non smoker um, health nut uh -huh. was diagnosed with stage four um, terminal uh, cancer, and uh, once I had recovered from the shock. Uh. Uh, my first thing that I did was contact Dignitas and uh, move up the layers of membership and complete mm -hmm. second level of paperwork. And I cannot tell you how much relief I felt knowing I have that option, mm -hmm. uh, that that is there for me at a time when I choose, or I may not. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. stats here, I think, from Oregon say that only 1% of people actually use the medication that is prescribed. So, who knows? But yeah. I, it's, yeah. a, it's a choice for me that uh, supports my values, my beliefs, and my priorities, and has given me enormous peace of mind. So, once that was done, I wanted to know what was going on here mm -hmm. and how I could get involved with the movement here. And I found Compassion and Choices and their work is tremendous. You mm -hmm. know, they have been a part of, in some way, the bills or acts in uh, all 10 states plus DC. Uh -huh. uh, and That I, have the... That move. have, yeah. And they are active in many others mm -hmm. now, like Massachusetts, who are trying to pass mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this uh, mm -hmm. bill. Because I know that Maine, I'm just thinking about the Northeast, Maine mm -hmm. has uh, Maine. A made uh, law in effect, uh, and so does Vermont. Yes, yeah. and Vermont actually passed a non-resident piece, I understand, recently, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. people from Connecticut or Massachusetts can go there. Mm -hmm. um, something mm -hmm. Oregon, did, yeah, Oregon to did that too. Mm -hmm. I because I think Vermont is one of the older states that have yeah, had this. Yeah, I law. think I think or they were this. 2008. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Okay. But, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So 15 years anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's how I got involved with them, and I've done a little more. Uh, every year, I support them. I'm a donor. Mm -hmm. I do things like this. Uh, <laughs> I and appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. Uh, to educate people, uh -huh. I uh -huh. th 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 because they are so active in uh -huh. advocacy, uh -huh. I sign all the forms uh -huh. and frequent uh -huh. requests uh -huh. to senators and house reps to please pass okay. this bill. Great. Well, let's go ahead and then go through the details of this bill so people out there know what, what yeah. we're talking about uh, uh, with it. So I have it list, have them listed down, but okay. well, we can check each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first one is um, that a person who is interested in applying for MAID has to have two, is it MDs? Two doctors? Uh, Clinicians is Cl the, the word that I've seen. Okay, that, uh, that they are within six months yes. of dying. Yes. Okay, and then they uh, make two requests, one verbally, yes. and then one in writing. And that one in writing has to have two witnesses who are, uh, one of whom is not a family member and not a member of a health care facility. Yes. So then, so then they have the, that. Um, they have a, a uh, evaluation by a qualified, certified, licensed mental health professional Absolutely. that says that they are of sound mind, that yes. this is a decision that is thoughtful and conscientious yes. and within their value and belief system. And that, I, I believe, is one of the key amendments that was added 
to um, the recent uh -huh. version of uh -huh. the bill. Uh -huh. uh, as a safeguard. Yeah. Well, and as a, uh, you know, as a psychiatric nurse for an <laughs> educator for, for my uh, career history, and it makes sense, you know, yeah. because you don't want, I mean, you don't want somebody just turning to this out of frustration or uh, psychosis or, you know, something, yeah. you know, that could be resolved. Okay. And then, um, then after those things are completed, then the uh, medical professional can prescribe the, a lethal dose of a drug, mm -hmm. which uh, the patient must be able to self-administer. Absolutely, and that's key. Yeah, yeah. That's key. Because that's, I'm thinking back to uh, Jack Kevorkian, and I'm not sure when that was, but. <laughs> that was in the 1990s, 1990s I believe. 1990s, and I remember, yeah. you know, he, he was involved in this, but, you know, the issue was that I think he crossed the line and administered a drug himself, and that's how he ended up, you know, in the criminal system at any rate. So those are the, the, the details of it. Okay. So. And as I understand it, the law in Massachusetts is uh, ordered after the Oregon law, which has been in effect yes. since 1994. 90, 94. Okay. And so, gosh, that's 30 years. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And there's a lot of data, and as, uh, that data shows that it's not you know, 3,000 people aren't going to apply and all 3,000 are yeah, going to yeah. administer mm -hmm. that drug. As, uh, for me, it, it's very similar. It is an option that I may choose uh -huh. to take uh -huh. if, you know, it supports my beliefs, but I don't know medically. Mm -hmm. You know, I may pop, pop off with a heart attack at some point, yeah, you know, yeah, so well, yeah. you don't know, but it, it, it's something that supports uh, mm -hmm. the right for uh, mm -hmm. a peaceful, dignified passing. Yeah, and as I understand it, the vast majority of people who use MAID are, have a cancer diagnosis. Yes. Like 60 six percent something like that and then I read a I think it's probably a national stat statistic that you know there is a fairly like 33 percent or so of people don't ever use it because mm -hmm. you know I guess one of the things that you know I get concerned about I mean is uh, I want to uh, I know that you can the use of morphine, hospice, and all that—that's you know—that's a, that's a good thing for that for that pain, but it's also something where I might want to be alert to say goodbye. Exactly. So one of uh, one of the things that when we're talking to people and encouraging them to have conversations about. How do you want to live the final piece of your life? Mm -hmm. How do you want to die? Is things like this because some of the side effects of pain meds are as bad as the cancer. Uh -huh. You'd have to be, in many cases, completely sedated. Mm -hmm. um, they don't always work. You're sedated, you have bowel issues obstruction, um, nausea, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's taking away the quality time uh -huh. that you might have uh -huh. with family and friends. It's taking away uh, the opportunity to have final conversations. So we just encourage people to think about all yeah. of these things uh -huh. uh, because it's much easier to think about them now rather than at, you uh -huh. know, a critical moment. And you just, and you just never know no. what, uh, what your death is going to be like, you know. No, no it's idea. different for yeah. everybody. Every one of us is going to go and every <laughs> one of us is going to have a different path. 
And, uh -huh. you know, just to give you an example, a friend of mine um, who actually was a living trust attorney um, had nothing in place for himself and became seriously ill. Uh -huh. And he remembers, thankfully he recovered, but he remembers being in a coma with groups of friends arguing about what he would have wanted. Uh -huh. Would he have wanted all this uh, life-altering uh, or life-supporting um, meds, or would he just want to pass? Mm -hmm. And I feel grateful I was not there because I would have been, because of my own values and uh -huh. priorities, I would have been on the side of, oh, let him pass peacefully uh -huh. without medical uh -huh. intervention. But no, he, uh, you uh -huh. know, the, the other side won, so uh -huh. to speak. But that's just an example yeah. of if you haven't had the conversations, even with yourself, about mm -hmm. what you want, Mm -hmm. So there's there's the number one takeaway, yeah. you know, kind of think about it and think where where you are with that for yourself. Yeah. And to ha and I think that there's probably a variety of different uh, thing uh, resources out there that could help you have that conversation with your family. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that Compassion and Choices does. There's uh -huh. a questionnaire booklets on their website, I believe, that you can down download, uh -huh. and uh -huh. they're great starter questions. Uh-huh. Very good. Very good. Um, you know, we probably should talk a little bit about the reason why this law hasn't passed for 16 <laughs> years. Um, and I mentioned already that the American Medical Association initially found it in conflict with their Hippocratic Oath related to do no harm, but now they, and more recently I think, have, have said no, it's really, do no harm can mean a lot of different kinds of things, mm -hmm. and that now it is up to uh, the doctor themselves, how their, their perception and how, what fits their values in responding, you know, so just as with the patient, you know, the, the doctor has a, you know, it's not in conflict, you know, if they have a clear perception of what is going to be, what, what, what uh, beneficence or what is doing, doing right by the patient is. Yeah, and it's, in, it's important. I, the first thing that I did when I met with my oncologist was tell him my viewpoint, yeah, everything yeah. is on file. Um, hospice now have a neutral stance mm -hmm. for this uh, bill. The main opposition uh, is usually uh, the Catholic Church here in Massachusetts played a very large role. Uh, last time around, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I think I, um, when it was on the ballot, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church was very involved. Um, now, the recent survey that was done uh, last year, for seven, where 73 percent of the population supports this bill, it was across a wide range of demographics, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. different ethnicities, mm -hmm. people with disabilities, religious voters. So that's a really good thing mm -hmm. uh, to have on our side. Because it, it seems that the uh, dissension for the bill is, is around this fear that people will be taken advantage of, that it's a slippery slope. But I think as we've made clear, you know, it's pretty specific. Yeah. You know, it's there's not a lot of will. Yeah, the, here. there have been a lot of safeguards like the uh -huh. ones you've mentioned that have been written into this bill. Uh-huh. Um, the church, I think, has a view in general that you do not take 
a life. Uh -huh. So the, the, their view on maid is... Yeah. Well, they, they, they tend to call it uh, suicide, yeah. you know, physician-assistant yeah. suicide, but that's really... We moved away from that. Yeah, it, it, it is not, the, not that. Uh, and that's really the main... Uh -huh. uh, has been, I should say, the main opposition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right, I'm looking at our time here, and we're probably going to need to close down. One of the things, you know, for further information that I would encourage people to do is, um, you know, if, if you're, you go onto the Internet to, to Google Compassion and Choices, there's a, a wealth of information there. It certainly is. Resources, and uh, if you want to explore, you know, all that. Um, and also, they have a, um, a legislative recap uh, there, that's a webinar that's coming yes. up um, yes. in uh, Is it October? October. Soon, yeah, I think soon. it's a, I think it's the third. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and so that's, that's open to everybody, yeah. and that would be a national, what's going on nationally. Yeah, and then as soon as um, Congress here... Starts its, uh, will, starts its next session, we will be uh, moving the bill forward again, hopefully, with uh, all the co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. And um, if you'd like to be involved with supporting us, there's a legislative day, usually mm -hmm. in June. Uh, and, and I just encourage everyone who wants to know more or mm -hmm. be involved to visit the Compassion and Choices website. Uh -huh. Okay. So I think that then what we've left our um, audience with today is the main thing is have the conversation, you know, have it with yourself. Yes. You know, and, uh, and have it with your family, you know, or and the people that you're, you're close to so that... Um, you know and they know what what you your know, wishes what, are what, what your wishes are you know i you know i teach a class you know that addresses accepting mortality you know i mean and, and it actually can be uh, one of the things that's valuable in just thinking about death is that it makes you feel much more um Wanting to embrace life, you know, uh, yeah. and so instead of, you know, kind of shying away from it, recognize that, you know, yeah. it gives you the energy to just, ah, well, life is good. Yeah, you know, let me embrace it. Let yeah, me enjoy it. That's exactly how I felt when I made my decision, done the paperwork. It's uh -huh. like it's all in the drawer now behind me. <laughs> I can I can live life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's. That's the goal, you know. It is. It is. <laughs> you know, enjoying life until you can't anymore, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's kind of a nursey way to put it, I guess. But anyway, but it's not, true. Yeah, Nadia, I thank you for. Uh, You're very thank you for welcome. Coming. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you for it's having great. me. The time went just really, really fast. So it did. Very good. All right. So long, everybody.